So let's talk about the final section in the object panel. And that is the extrude and bevel settings. Let's start off with the easier portions of this to explain. The depth parameter just sets how extruded the object is. So when I increase the value, I get thicker objects. When I decrease it, I get smaller objects or thinner objects. We can also remove the front and back or sides of an object. For example, turning off the front faces will cause the interior of the object to be visible. As I rotate the example around, you can see the sides of the interior from the front. But as I go around to the back, the back is solid. If I turn off the back faces, then you can see right through the object and the sides look almost like a ribbon wrapped into a shape. So the sides are pretty important and so we'll add all three of them back in. The spike buster is something that you usually should have turned on, especially for Illustrator files. This analyzes the vector paths and cleans up the 3D object that was created with it. Often you'll have polygons in odd places and spike buster will usually make the object look better. In this case, it's a fairly simple object, so it doesn't make too much of a difference, but on more complex objects, and especially if you're bringing text in from Illustrator, um, it does make a difference. And now we get to outside bevels, which is this pop-up right here. Outside bevels are critical to the look of the object. The edges of an object really give it a sense of depth and provide interesting visual detail that can really make the object pop, especially if, it, if there's a transparent material on it or a very reflective material on it. The bevels sculpt the edges basically adding in grooves or layers or just other interesting details to the sides of the object. So let's take a look at a few different variations. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit here so we can see what we're looking at. And with the outside bevels, there's a variety of different categories. Unfortunately, my uh, submenu is going off in the wrong direction, but I'll go to Insert Face and select the halo bevel and you can see what that does for us kind of gives us a nice rounded edge and come down to our pipe section and, and grab the five stripe pipe and you can see this gives us kind of a layered look and we can go to our sharp section and grab the scalloped bevel which gives us kind of an art deco type of a feel and go down to stacks and select our fins which gives you a very layered look and go down to woodwork and grab something like scoop which is going to give you kind of an inverted version of the halo bevel so those are just a few of the examples that can show you what you can do with the bevels i recommend going through all of these and seeing which ones you like best and which ones work for different objects and especially which ones work for different materials because as I mentioned, the transparent and reflective objects, it really makes a difference which bevel you have selected. Is it just something kind of scooped and rounded like this? Or do you have something that's got a few more layers or angles to it like this one? And in fact, let's open up our material swatches and give you an idea of what this is going to do. So we're going to select a shiny object and apply it to this. And we can rotate around a little bit and do a regular render. And let's actually extrude the depth of this a little bit. And make this a little bit bigger. And then do the render. And now we can switch this out to, say, the scooped bevel. And see how that looks. And so that you can see, this is really reflecting the texture that is assigned to it. And we'll get into this more in the material tutorial. But it's important to notice that, you know, when you have a scoop bevel like this, you really see the reflection. Whereas if you have something that's a little bit more angular, you really don't see the reflection of that texture map. And then you can use bevel scale to increase the size of the bevel or decrease it. Uh, you can even go so far as inverting it. And so that just adds to the different types of looks that you can get with this exact same bevel. 
giving you a lot of flexibility in how your edges are configured. And it's important to note that bevels on text behave exactly the same way as they do on Illustrator objects. So if I had my 3D text back here, all these controls would have the same effect on the text as they do on the Illustrator shape. And so that's it for talking about the Illustrator shape right now. Again, there is a separate tutorial on how to prepare Illustrator files for use in Invigorator. But uh, we're not going to go into that right now. Because there is one last category of objects, the primitives. So we've deleted our Illustrator object. And now we're going to add in a primitive by going to Object, Create 3D Primitive. By default, it creates a sphere. You'll notice that the bevel settings have disappeared. The primitives do not have bevels, so the bevel section has been replaced with the primitive settings section. And this allows you to set what primitive you want to work with and adjust the parameters for that primitive. And I'll flip through the different primitives. You'll notice that some are probably more useful than others. For example, we could take a cylinder here and flatten that down and use that as the basis for a medallion of some sort by applying a gold or silver or some other metallic texture to it. And then we have cones and the torus, which is always a fun object to play around with and different types of pyramids. And, and so that's the way the primitives work. They're basically building blocks that you can use to create other shapes or enhance uh, the illustrator or text objects that you bring in. But they are probably the least used objects and most likely you're usually going to be using 3D text or illustrator files. So that should give you some stuff to play around with and do some experimentation. Please stop by the Digital Anarchy website for the other intro tutorials. DigitalAnarchy.com has a lot of tutorial movies, both on 3D Invigorator and our other products. Uh, we have free demo filters and a whole lot more. So I hope you enjoyed this, and thanks for joining me.